As the year begins its last chapter, excitement naturally rises for a period of wanton gift-giving, also known as Christmas. And I, Benjai Klaus II, much like I've done for the last two weeks, is here to present you with some ideas for you and or your loved ones this week in the brain-burning heavyweight category. Board gaming doesn't get more complex than this. It's meaty, it's chewy, it's the furthest thing from Monopoly. So get strapped in, don your thinking caps, and count with me from 1 to 10. Number 1. Messina 1347 is the most topical entry on this list, and not in a yay it's the season of cheer way, but we won't dwell too much on a game that takes place during the initial outbreak of the Black Death. Centering on the titular city in Italy, you'll be getting your worker placement and grid movement on to the song of saving as many lives and stopping the spread of the plague as best you can. Those that you do save then serve your own estate in the countryside, and this is where you really get to work on building your infrastructure that aids your resource and maple generation, and also advancing along tracks like those representing the local city register and church each providing variations on a theme to your ultimate goal of advancing along the population register. Nothing groundbreaking to be found here, but all sorts of well polished. Number 2. Arc Nova is probably the easiest to include on this list, by virtue of it being well received from here to kingdom come since its release. With its engine building and car tableau at its core, its comparisons with terraforming Mars aren't completely without merit, but also a little bit lazy. As you can see, the theme of the game is the management of a zoo with a side order of conservation efforts. And so, Ark Nova is its own game, where car drafting and weaving a path to the most optimal advancement along the game's many tracks is its draw. Action selection is broken down into five choices, and each time you choose one, it gets placed back at the start of the rotary, where actions are less potent. You've also got your own tile placement player board zoo to add into the mix, all of which add up to a highly accessible, moderately complex game that has a limited number of detractors. Number 3. Great Western Trowel. Getting the second edition spit and polish treatment is the only way I can justify a six year old game's inclusion on this list. But still, the game that well and truly put Mr. Fister on the map is all sorts of Rondell Tastic. You play as a rancher in 19th century US of A, herding cattle to the train station. But it starts with deck building, where diversity and quality of the cattle cards in your hand will ultimately determine your income and ability to do more of the good things the game has to offer. The modular board which you can traverse a minimum or maximum number of spaces, and which gets populated by more and more tiles as the game progresses, underpins the replayability and strategic elegance of the game, as you carry out actions on the tiles you land on, advance al along your crew tracks and upgrading your player board as you go, ultimately oversimplifies what is real meaty goodness. Number 4. Bitoku is the name of the spirits you embody on your path towards transcendence. Yes, we're going full spiritual in this engine building hand management game that will look daunting with its busy bumblebee board, but on your side of the table it looks more like drawing cards, discarding down and then taking actions with them. When you do that you'll also activate dice, which is where the worker placement comes in, as there's crossover in the similar actions you can take with both dice and cards. There's a nice overlap and transition of tried and trusted mechanics on display here. And this is one of those games that disguises its myriad of choice and differing approaches behind the small number of different actions you can take, and one that rewards timing, getting to where you need first and positioning yourself to stay ahead of the curve. Straightforward and complex all in one pretty looking package. Number 5. Nemesis Lockdown, aka Nemesis 1.5, or more officially a standalone expansion, transposes the action to Mars but retains its core gameplay, that being highly thematic survival horror. The modular board is, sees you either semi or fully cooperatively exploring rooms that each have their own rule set and actions you can take, and it's all about finding and using those rooms to complete your mission. 
but in your way is the glorious Xenomorph miniatures that are more than capable of spawning straight up in your grill, especially if you decide to rush around the place and make a racket. But it's the hand management and variable player powers that enable all of the action. With the limited cards in your hand used as either the action on the card itself or the resource to pay for others, meaning that efficiency of actions and cooperation are the only way to succeed in this highly atmospheric game. Number 6. Boone Lake sees you playing as a group of pioneers leaving civilization behind to settle along the shores of a long forgotten region. We're definitely back in Eurotown with cards pushing the action and a whopping two rounds of gameplay with an interim scoring session in the middle. Yep, it's one of those. So to the action selection at the start of every turn is player engagement in a mechanic because whatever action tile you select sees you doing everything whilst all the other players also get to do some of what's printed. I love me a bit of that. Cards are broken down into three types, those that pop off immediately, give passive effects or help with end game scoring. And all of this is what enables exploration of the shoreline, building houses and settlements, raising cattle and producing raw materials. All fairly typical, but well designed and executed. Number 7. Carnegie is another meaty euro I'm not afraid and it features one of the prominent names of the expanding economy of the late 19th century United States. Each player turn an action from four available is chosen and everyone around the table then takes the same action. This makes it deviate from many of its peers because you really need to pay attention to everyone else's wants and needs. But thematically and mechanically this is an economy game about elevating your company to the top of the capitalist pile. So everything is kind of dry and financy, but when a game's so tight, you got to ask yourself, do you want glitz and glamour, or do you want the nuts and bolts to really sing? So whether you're engaging with human resources for some worker placement, getting your construction on, focusing on management where you make money and goods, or pointing your efforts on R&D to expand your reach, there will be plenty of really heavy strategy on offer. Number 8. Gollum goes full engine builder and gets his name because well you're in control of the said animated clay statues that if you're not careful will move away from their primary goal of protecting people and go buck wild. Over the course of 4 rounds your students will be creating or activating your dudes and picking up upgrading some bonuses as you go, building artifacts that give permanent bonuses and casting spells that do similar but randomly drawn coloured marbles will dictate how powerful each of these actions are every turn and depending on which coloured marble you select alongside your action, you'll advance your students' powers and attract the favour of powerful locals, with the former being particularly important so that you can keep control of your clay puppets, lest you be forced to destroy and bury them. This is a game that will only stand apart if you like the theme, but with very little to distinguish a lot of these games, there are worse ways to sell yourself. Number 9. Oath. Chronicles of Empire and Exile is the next in a growing line of asymmetrical beauties from Cole and Leader. This time we see a novel take on campaign games, with players guiding the course of history in an ancient land with choices that could see you supporting and bolstering the current ruling elite or scheming to bring the kingdom as it stands to its knees. But it's the consequences of those choices that will affect what resources and actions are available and even what the win con is in future games. Mechanically you'll be using a shared tableau to push the narrative and the card play, most of which represents the denizens both individual and communal and it will take a while to get used to all the cogs that make up the mechanics. But really the enjoyment of this game will lean heavily into whether you're able to loosen your grip somewhat on min-max in a winning strategy. The join contained therein is how the political landscape changes and the waxing and waning fortunes of those in charge. And number 10, Imperial Steam has trains, economy and logistics in its meta keyword search. But before you run for the hills if you're not into that type of thing, stay a while and listen. So you start in Vienna and the goal is to get to Trieste with the most amount of money aka victory points. 
And to do that, well, you've got to expand your rail network, duh. But you've got to be quick at it because this is very much a race to said places on the map, each having their own particular wants and needs, which in mechanical terms means some spaces will have more demand for goods and others will have great opportunity to produce said goods, with more others then enabling you to upgrade your whole infrastructure, providing passive benefits in so doing. You really are threading the needle here, and the need for forward planning is ever present. But with a randomised map for each game, there's only so much knowing how a game's going to play out until you start. And there you have the weightiest of Christmas gift ideas. If not literally, then at least in terms of how much you need a rest after playing. We produce these videos every year, so feel very free to check out previous iterations of our heavyweight recommends. And please do send your favourite games in this category down to the comments section below. Of course, if you missed it, we already brought you 10 lightweight and 10 mediumweight recommendations, and we'll cap off this series with some stocking stuffers next week. Alas, I've been the voice of Board Game Klaus, and this video has ended.